And they're not the only family whose job never got off the ground floor. This is a mess. This is an absolute mess. Meet Babylon Brooks, builder Scott Brooks. This is horrible. That's something Scott's customers would agree with. I don't want these people's money. Yeah, that's not something these customers would agree with. He's a compulsive liar. What do you want me to say to this guy when I find him? Give us our money back. For a guy who owns a pretty big construction company, Scott Brooks doesn't seem to know much about how to run it. You're not a licensed builder, right? No, I am not. From jobs started and not finished. This guy has made my life a living hell. To jobs where Scott takes a deposit and never starts a job. I hope he has eyes in the back of his head and looks in shadows. One thing remains consistent. Babylon Brooks bails on his customers when the going gets tough. It's your business. I think you should communicate with them. I communicate with them and then something become mis misconstrued of, 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 of I said this, they said that. How much worse could it get? You got the Hall of Shame guy standing here Rob, questioning you. You don't like that. No, it sucks. Dawn and her dad, Louie, wanted to build a second story addition on Louie's Garden City home. Scott Brooks of Contour Property Solutions told them his company could do the job. He required 50% down. 50% down was a huge amount of money. A $2,000 going out the door um, with empty promises. Empty promises, indeed. The job was never even started. After a year of excuses... We got attorney involved to write a letter of do something or give us our money back. Like every other response from him, nothing. Here's the attorney. He took money that didn't belong to him, that he didn't earn, and he converted it to his own purposes. David Rappaport thinks Scott Brooks should be charged criminally. Dawn in Garden City, $82,000. What happened with that? Uh, that's all something that's getting resolved right now. Well, how's it getting resolved? I, you have to talk to my attorney on that. Talk to my attorney seems to be Scott's go-to answer. And by the way, I will go talk to Drew Norton, Scott's attorney. Don't interfere with that or else we, then we're not going to have any conversation. Calm down, Perry Mason. Objected to. Next unhappy customer, this lady who says Scott Brooks called her too picky, difficult, and erratic. I'm like, I'm erratic. I'm not erratic. You guys just won't come in and finish my house. And you have almost $60,000 of my money, which is what the contract was for. Contour Property Solutions did some work inside her Westland home, but wouldn't finish. Scott's go-to is attorney Drew Norton sent the customer this letter. Your inability to make decisions, give direction, and frankly, just changing your mind on a whim have made CPS's performance under the contract impossible. He also states, CPS has ceased all work at the property. He signs the letter, good luck, Drew S. Norton. What's Scott say? She fired us. The customer's attorney disagrees and is suing Scott for fraud and unjust enrichment, among other things. Lawyer Stephen Hyder. So he intentionally represented himself as a contra contractor that he could do this work and comes to find out he could not. Then there's victim Scott, who can't stand alleged victimizer Scott. Notice the lovely plywood in his dining room. That's to seal off a part of his house. Contour tore out more than a year ago to build an extra room. The job was started, but again, the customer says, Brooks Bob. Never heard again from them other than me constantly calling them saying, when are you coming? When are you coming? Brooks blames it on the customer. That's a guy who decided he wanted to start working under our permit and we asked him to stop and he wouldn't. Andrea's got sinks in her living room. She hired Contour in February of last year, paid them close to 25 grand for two bathroom remodels. When the job still wasn't done by November, she sent Scott Brooks this letter saying, either finish or you're fired. He never responded to the letter of intent. No, I sent it certified mail, so I know that he got it mm -hmm. and haven't heard anything since. Scott's response, that is fault. I have a letter from her that said you she fired you for something. Because I can't get her vanity in time. Robert Scott Brooks was hard to catch. He has an office, but doesn't spend much time in any one place. And attorney Stephen Hyder says he can't even pin him down to serve him. But I find him at Kroger where he's buying flowers. Ain't that sweet. Can you talk to me a little bit about your business? 
Which one? Uh, Contour Solutions, right there on your shirt. What about it? I don't know if Scott Brooks is stupid or thinks I'm stupid, but he seems lost on a lot of things construction guys should know. You're not a licensed builder, right? No, I am not. So who holds a license for your company? We have two two license holders. And who are they? I, I'm not going to tell you that. You guys already know that information. Nah, I don't. I actually don't know that. Well, then that's something you need to talk about with my attorney. Doesn't the company have to have a license? Sure does. And who's the licensee? And again, you can talk to you can talk to my I attorney. I don't think there's a license for the for contour property solutions. It doesn't solutions. have to be under contour property solutions. It can be pulled by an individual. Scott, what are you talking about? Let me bring in an expert who knows contractor law, attorney Mark Frankel. The contract actually has to disclose who the licensee is and provide the license number. So it's no secret, and you can't just have a willy-nilly bunch of licensees to plug into jobs. It can't be a subcontractor or somebody else they hire for a special job. It's got to be someone employed by that company and who's an officer. Which is where licensed contractor Anthony Bellacore comes in. Scott used him to pull permits on some of Contour's jobs. It was kind of personal when I left. Um, some things were said, so I basically was just like, I canceled all the permits and went my ways. Does he owe you money? Yes. Anthony says he wasn't an officer of the company, just a guy doing jobs for Brooks. Why doesn't Scott get a uh, uh, license? That, that's a question for the ages right there, isn't it? But way worse than the licensing issues is the issue of the missing money Brooks admits he took from Dawn and her dad. Well, he's got to give him the $82,000 back. Right. And if he doesn't, because it's being held, the Builders Trust Fund Act says that's money's in trust and can only be used for that job. Right. And if he's spending on other things, not only does the company owe him the money, but he personally owes them the money. Scott says he's going to pay him back. So when are they going to get their money? You can ask Drew that because the reality of it is that's that's what is. Do you been, have the money? Do I have the money myself? The eighty-two thousand. Yeah. I don't have I don't have any of it personally myself. No. So is it in a company account? I, again, talk to Drew about that, please. I, I just think that's the smartest way. Okay, well, your attorney's probably going to say he doesn't want to talk to me. But I give it a try. I go to Drew Norton's Troy office to get some answers. Happy to see me? Uh, no. <laughs> well, your client uh, uh, said, you need to talk to my lawyer, so I'm here. Okay. Um... But as I predicted, he doesn't want to talk. But I want to talk because I got something to say. Scott Brooks, you're in the Hall of Shame. Scott's attorney did usher me and my cameraman into his office briefly, but didn't want to speak on camera nor answer any of the questions Scott told me to talk to his attorney about. So what's going to happen to Brooks? The attorney representing Dawn and her dad told me the prosecutor's office is looking at the case of the missing 82 grand. And at least one customer is planning to file a complaint with the attorney general.